Seven Seas Studio again. Last month we taught you how to catch sandbar sharks in March. This upcoming month of April, it's all about those big boy bull sharks. April is one of the best months for catching either your largest bull shark or your first bull shark. You know, in the Texas Shark Rodeo, there was roughly about 65 bull sharks caught in the month of April alone. Every catch of the week was a monster bull shark. This past season was lacking in the nine foot bull shark range, but in the previous season, everybody and their mother got a nine foot bull. And if you just start shark fishing and you don't know much about the lengths, in Texas, a nine foot bull is pretty much where they start to max out. And so that should be your goal. So if you're interested, stay tuned. We're gonna show you more footage, tell you what bait to use and call up the homies. So let's keep this rolling. Now bull sharks have one of the highest testosterone levels of any animal in the animal kingdom, which means they are aggressive, they do feed aggressively. So send those big baits, send those big hooks. You know, you and the homies aren't going to know what hit you if a pack rolls in because all those rods are going to be going off. Historically speaking though, bull shark fishing tends to be a night game. I'm not saying it's not going to happen during the day, it happens all the time. But if you're dead set on catching a bull, I would suggest going right before the sun goes down run out your baits and either right when the sun's setting or right when it's coming up you're going to be getting some runs now one of the best parts about bull sharks feeding at night is they do tend to come in pretty close to shore so you don't have to run your baits real far although it's always better to you know stagger your baits at different lanes just to help you find them but let's call up one of the homies and see what his preference for bait is for catching bull sharks all right we're gonna hit my buddy Joel and get his input on bull shark fishing Oh, getting a phone call. Hello? Hey bro, what are you up to? Hey man, just here barbecuing you. I'm actually here in the studio. I want you to tell everybody what the month of April and shark fishing is about. April? That's a good month, man. That's when a lot of big uh, bull sharks come around the area. And what's your favorite bait to use? Uh, my favorite bait, personally, I like to use chunks of jacks, mostly the center section, uh, even chunks of cow nose. You could use whiting as well, but you have to weed around black tips and stuff like that to get to those big bull sharks. All right, brother. Well, I'll hit you up later, man. Thanks for the input. Peace. All right, no problem. And there you have it, guys. So to recap what Joel was talking about, jacks and cow nose are the way to go. Bigger chunks are the ticket because it helps weed through smaller sharks. Now if you live somewhere like Corpus, I know finding bait isn't typically a problem for you guys. Your bait shops are pretty well stocked up. You can roll up for $20-$30 dollars and you can get yourself a big jack of big cow nose. But if you fish South Padre Island like me, sometimes finding bait can be an issue because our bait shops don't typically carry those kind of baits. So here's what I like to do. I keep a handful of these in my truck. Three ounce spoons. I hit the jetties the morning of a trip, I hit the tip, and I hit channel side. And pretty quickly I can round up some jacks. But if you're in a hurry, you want to hit your spot, you know, you can drive down the beach, look for bait balls on the way to your spot, cast lures at them, get some jacks. But if you don't see any bait balls and you get to your spot, you can always throw chunk bait and get some jacks. And if there's no smaller sharks around, sometimes you'll get lucky. I've caught decent sized bull sharks on pieces of mullet head casting out in the second gut. And sometimes even the first. I have a friend who literally caught a nine foot bull one night on a cast out rod and now he's a local badass for it. One thing I do want to talk about is setting the hook on these bulls. If you have a typical bull run, what's going to happen is it's going to be a fast initial run and then it's just going to calm down. So what you want to do is get to your rod in time while that initial run is happening, bump up the drag, set the hook. Usually that's the best way to go with these bull sharks. All right, so let's take a look at some of our logs here for April. So at the beginning of April, sometimes I'm still in March mode and still going after those sandbars, casting small baits. So here April 3rd, I have multiple sandbar sharks in the morning on cast out rods. I was casting from the sand. I kind of remember that day was really cold and I didn't want to get in the water. And I was using small chunks of frozen stingray and it was producing. April 5th, medium sized bull sharks in the surf on small chunks of jack. April 8th, nothing but black tips in the surf, conditions glass, water blue. You know what, this is something we need to talk about because a lot of experienced shark fishermen take it for granted that we know this and people who are just starting don't. Is that whenever you see brown water and the water's choppy, that's the best time to go after bull sharks. Sometimes you see those kind of days and you stay home, now that's when you want to go. Because if you show up and it's blue water and it's glass and you have an easy time taking out your baits, usually your chances of getting a decent bull shark just got cut down. April 9th, 5 foot bulls on cast out rods. April 12th, monster bull sharks in the surf near jetties using whole cow nose as bait. 
Now, April 15th, I want to talk about this. This is kind of off topic, but I remember this day I was having a hard time with the bait stealing fish like pinfish. But one thing I've learned over the years is pinfish don't typically like to eat other pinfish. So if you leave the pinfish hole and cast it out, you know, while everybody else is getting their bait stolen and just getting little bites, if you cast whole pinfish, that'll give you a chance at catching a better fish. And I remember I was the only one who caught, you know, a decent sized bull red that day. April 16th, seven foot bull, second gut on big jackhead. Now April 17th, this this is two different logs from two separate years in the same date because it was the same bait, different years. But one time I was at the jetties and the bait fish were blowing up. Lots of big fish were chasing them. Obviously, I guess I didn't nail anything too great that day except I got some keeper sheephead. But now on pins on, there was this past year, you know, we snuck out there during the closure of the beaches. And uh, Joel got some good trout. But I remember a lot of bait fish were rolling up. And he kept telling me, he's like, hey, if you eat one of those bait fish that rolls up, you know, I'll eat one too. And I kept eating them to try to get him to, you know, eat some. We both had some drinks in us. But I kept doing it, and then he wouldn't do it. I ate, like, ten bait fish before I finally got him to kind of eat one fish. But, you know what, if I find the footage, I'll throw it in there. But I don't, I don't really remember where I put it. Let's see. April 18th, big stingray caught in the surf around mile six. No other big fish caught that day. Crazy amounts of whiting. Fished early in the afternoon, conditions 1 to 2. Mm, April 22nd, I went offshore. We caught lots of jacks and bonita and actually some scallops too. April 23rd, uh, sharks 3 to 6 feet, 1 to 2 foot surf, blue water, another one of those blue water days. April 24th, small bonnet heads during the day at the jetties. Oh man, this was the night before my birthday. I remember at 11 p.m., all hell broke loose. Uh, a game warden rolled up on me, and at that exact moment, all three of my rods went off, and they were all cast out thin rods, and it was a big pack of bull sharks and big bull sharks. Every single one of my cast out rods got broke, and the game warden was losing his shit watching this. He was really surprised at what was going on. I was trying to ask him for help. I was telling him to grab a rod. You know, all the rods broke. We lost all the sharks, and we, we kind of just sat down for a minute afterwards and just reminisced about it but it, that, that was a wild night and i had just bought those rods the night before and they were all like hundred dollar rods so i i lost like three hundred dollars that night um lots of spanish mackerel around too april 25th multiple seven foot bulls in the surf two to three foot waves um fat six foot black tip in the surf on pins conditions three feet waves april 29th seven foot bull third gut choppy water April 30th, caught one four to five foot black tip. Also caught a gator trout on the shark. <laughs> I remember I dropped a shark rod. I put a smaller bait on it. I dropped a, I actually dropped a piece of stingray. It was like this big and a big gator trout picked up the shark rod. And I remember just seeing my line kind of drift. And I was like, oh man, like I, I thought the weight had just come unstuck. But I reeled it in, didn't feel anything, so I kept bringing it in, bringing it in. It ended up being a gator trout. Uh, conditions were 1 to 2, uh, blue water, so another one of those blue water days. All right, let's wrap this up. I'll try to keep it short and sweet. Next month, we're talking about scallops and greater hammerheads. This episode, I didn't have anybody on the air. But you know what, for next month, I'm definitely going to try to have Joel here because I know I got some sick footage of him catching some big hammers. So until next time, peace and thank you guys for watching.